Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about seniors who have gotten complacent and are not mes measuring up to expectations. So let's get into it. So the question in question was pretty much that. It was, well, Frederick, what about seniors who have gotten to the stage where they are so complacent or have become so complacent that they just don't measure up anymore? They're they're not up to up to this current skill levels that are required in today's uh, today's uh, IT community. What should they do? Do they change career, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And the short answer is that the most common thing that I see is that they go into middle management or possibly recruitment as well. I've seen that as sometimes as well. And some of them do edu educate, but that's not, it's, it is common, but not as common. Let me explain. So we have to define a few things before it makes any sense, the thing that I'm going to try to say here. And that is that when you are a senior that is under expectation, or rather what that question entails is that there is such a thing as someone who's just bad. And I will touch on that as well because I have a small little story for you about that because I have met someone who is just bad from the perspective of what is required in order to survive in IT. But usually there's a range to when you're not filling expectations. So basically what that means is that there are many many viewpoints on what you might be lacking in. Now, the most common thing you see in a senior developer where they're at least lacking is that they are either lacking in the technical area or they're lacking in the social area. Left brain, I think it's right brain and uh, left brain type of thing. Like you're usually lacking in one of them. It's very rare that you lack in both. But that's what happens in general terms when you don't nurture your career in a healthy manner. And that is, I have so many videos on how to do that so we can kind of leave that discussion. But let's just say for this, for this discussion that it is very important that you expose yourself to situations where you're nurturing your different assets because it is very much like being healthy, going to the gym, working out, taking care of yourself. This is taking care of your career. So if you are lacking in technical skills. It's usually very common to say, and this is actually, I would say, now this is completely taken out of the thin, thin air but based on my personal experiences, but it's, I see that it's very common that seniors who lack technical skills are usually going in, are already on the manager path. They're not really die hard programmers. They're programmers who have been doing this for a while but they want to move up in the world. They're not married to the technical aspects of coding. Even today I work with um, people who, I mean, at a very young age have left coding behind and most of what they do is management at this point. And that's classic. That's what happens usually. The senior gets more responsibility within the administrative work and very organically stop, stops coding until the point where they almost don't have the skills anymore in order to do it. And it can creep up on you. Don't you think that it can't happen to you? It happens quicker than you think. All of a sudden, you it starts small. You start noticing that, oh, these tools are kind of interesting, but I don't know the first thing about this. So when did, when did this become a thing? Keeping yourself relevant is the, one of the things that requires extra effort for you as a developer. It's one of those hidden costs that you pay for that high salary and market value. So. That's one way. The other way is that they have really poor social skills, which is also a fairly common thing. And then we, at least for me, we get into a little bit of a problem because I've talked to a few friends of mine who came to visit and they explained that, oh, I have this senior at my job and he's like really, really good and he knows all the things, but he's, he's, his attitude is just so poor and everybody's scared of him and nobody wants to talk to him. And to me, I know that this term senior is a little bit loose, but to me that is just a, an experienced developer. It's, a, it's an experienced um, mid-level developer, a douchebag uh, basically, because a real true, like a true senior is a person that should, should not have an issue 
collaborating with other people because they should be be professional enough to understand that the success of the company and the success of their project is not only dependent on them. This is a very idealistic idea, I know, but it does have, I think, a fair bit of relevancy. If even Linus Torvalds can apologize for being a bit of a something, I think that it's well within reason to say that any senior, any true senior should be aware enough to know that it's not just about you. But that's the other part. And it's actually very common that you might have at least introverts, people who are not so socially familiar and still are really, really technical. And that happens, that's a, usually a personality type. It goes from junior to mid-level to senior, that's kind of cross, uh, cross role if, if that makes sense. So what I was saying is basically that these two things are usually not present in the same person at the same time. So if you have really high technical skills, you can get a job uh, and usually what they do is that they get a job in a company that is desperate for senior experiences and does not have a very high quality check for the people that they get in. They're not so focused on quality people as opposed of quantity. And this is usually where in it's gonna happen it's usually gonna happen in not it's in large corporations that are non-IT. Not Google, not Microsoft, etc. etc. We're talking about banks, automo- the automotive industry, electric electricity companies, like any, you can think of it as any corporation of a fairly significant size that does not have a culture around innovation. Because if you have a culture around innovation, such as with the FANG companies and other companies, you are looking for passionate, innovative people who really, who really are going to push things. Because these are the people, they are your lifeblood. They are the people who are going to come up with the next million dollar idea or billion dollar idea. In these other organizations, it's more about getting people who are stable so that you can plan accordingly and just continue producing within the IT department. And both the socially weak senior and the technical weak senior can on average be found in these sorts of organizations because they absorb these people based mostly on the years that this person already has on their CV. Where this is where I call it, basically what they're doing is that they're hiring quantity over quality. They care more about the years that this person has on their CV then they care about the quality and the quality of the person. That's usually how it goes. I have met one of these people that I've spoken about, one who was weak in both areas. And if you're in that area, then yes, you're probably not, you're not going to survive as a software engineer. This person had been working for 10 years in the same company. I met this person and when I met this person, he was in the late stages of the unemployment program here in Sweden. And for the, if you've been there, you will know that if you get all the way to there, that means that you have been unemployed for more than a few years and you have not been able to get any, any traction on a job or anything like that. And when I met this person, I understood why. Because the, this person was a middle-aged man who had been working for for 10 years at the same company, he had literally no, he actually said these words to me. He said, no, the computer is just a tool to me. I don't, I never use my computer outside of work. And I go, how the fuck are you going to stay updated? I'm, I, I know that you should be able to have a private life, but that you should have, like, if you say that to an employer, they're not going to like the sound of that. So no ambition in just in general, this was just one of many statements, but no ambition, no interest into in IT whatsoever, fairly weak technical skills, made some, you could do some work with C Sharp and jQuery and stuff like that, and that is just not good enough these days. And finally, the social skills were, yeah, pretty weak, I would say. He wasn't a really good, strong communicator. So what I want you to take away from this is that usually what happens with senior developers who get complacent is that they're either 
weak in their social skills or the weak in their technical skills. If they're weak technically, they usually go into middle management of some sort. If they're weak socially, they stay just a normal average coder. And both of these, uh, these uh, types of seniors are usually found in companies who don't have a good hiring process for quality people. They're simply looking to either fill a position or they do what I call quantity-based hiring. They try, they look at how much time you have on your CV versus the quality of that time. And lastly, if you do find a senior who has, in, in my little story here with this person that I met, that uh, is weak in both, they usually don't make it in IT because it's a foundation for you to have one of these two aspects if, as a senior for you to be, to be valuable to anybody. If you are weak socially, you're weak technically and you have no ambition or passion for what you do, then nobody is going to want to hire you, I'm sorry to say. Have a great day.